I'm excited to show you a preview of a brand new version of Fidelity FX super resolution technology appropriately named FSR3. Soon, you know, it's it's coming, it's coming soon. It's coming on December 31st of 2023. Actually, it's going to be really sooner. It's in September of 2023. And the date for it is probably going to be somewhere in August. Nah, 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 nah. It's obviously coming out in August. All those other people were wrong. Small indie company. Just to catch you up to speed, if you're unaware of what FSR3 fluid motion technology is, it's supposed to be AMD's competitor to DLS3 frame generation, which uses two frames generated by the game engine and then interpolates the difference between the two and then generates a fake frame in between them to help smooth the motion of a game. And Nvidia's RTX 4000 has been infamous for using it in its marketing. Why has AMD been so silent though, especially a company who has all of their software open source. It seems like you'd wanna let the community know what's going on with the development of this very essential technology going into game development in the future. This is usually a tactic that companies do when they don't wanna set up any expectations for the public. And there has been some speculation in the community from people that know a lot more about coding than I do, that in AMD's GPU open source code, that there has been updates to it that would indicate that they are still working on FSR 3.0 is when is this gonna come out? It's weird for a company to go up on stage so confidently and announce this technology only to barely tell us anything for months and months to follow. The only news we got about FSR 3.0 was at GDC Game Developers Conference back in March of 2023 here. And all they showed there was how FSR 3.0 would integrate into the game rendering pipeline which in the grand scheme of things, we already knew how this was gonna work. I wanna zone in more to when AMD announced FSR 3.0 at this presentation. But before we do that, here's a quick word from our sponsor. If you're anything like this, Microsoft is coming to get you and wants to charge $200 for Windows 11. That's why our only hope is SCD key. With them, you can get Windows 10 Pro for a low price and upgrade it for free to Windows 11. Once you get to checkout, make sure to use code VEX for an extra 25% off of this already great deal and just choose your preferred payment method and you will be emailed your code. Working with SCD keys, all of their codes have come from OEM manufacturers and they're completely safe, so no need to worry about that. Again, huge thanks to today's sponsor. Make sure to use code VEX. Let's get back into it. Because AMD's presentation happened a month after NVIDIA announced DLSS3 frame generation. And as you guys know, NVIDIA has been marketing DLSS3 frame generation very heavily because with the power of DLSS3, you can quote unquote, double your frame rate. So just doing a little theory crafting in the month span from NVIDIA's announcement of DLSS3 to AMD's announcement of FSR3, AMD could have easily just prepared this and announced that on that day. It's possible that FSR3 wasn't really in development before this time. And a big indicator of this would be at their presentation, notice on stage, they did not give a release date. And this was intentional because maybe they didn't know how long it was going to take. You don't wanna make guarantees to the community on, on an empty promise. Remember, this is the same marketing team that announced AMD's HyperRx technology and said it was going to release in the first half of 2023. So look forward to HyperRx coming out uh, early next year and you can experience it yourself. HyperRx is even more funny because we know even less about the development of HyperRx than we know the development of FSR3. And that's not saying much. The same marketing team that mocked NVIDIA over a power connector. And there's no need for a new power adapter. The same one that drastically overstated the performance of the 7900 XTX and basically lied to the public. In pure rendering, the 7900 XTX is up to 1.7 times faster than our previous generation flagship GPU. This is the same marketing team that did all this at the same presentation. But the reason why I think we've heard so little about FSR3 is because it's possible that it's way more harder to implement than AMD ever anticipated. It's possible that at the time in that month span, wanting to make a rash marketing decision to announce FSR3, 
that they thought it was easy to do. Because all it technically is, is frame interpolation, generating a fake frame in between two real frames rendered by the game engine. And TVs have been doing frame interpolation for years and years to make the motion in movies and shows and stuff look smoother than it actually is. But that whole process of generating a fake frame in between two real frames means that it has to hold on to the new frame until it can generate the one in between them. So that increases the latency on the display. And TVs that are just showing you a movie or something do not care about latency, but games do. Because in games, if the latency is too high, then it's gonna feel nauseating. And how Nvidia got around this latency problem with frame generation in games is through their technology called Nvidia Reflex. And NVIDIA Reflex does have a huge impact on the system latency from the time that you move your mouse until your character moves on screen. And AMD does have somewhat an alternative to this in their software, and it's called AMD Radeon Anti-Lag. But uh, from some research that's done by Igor's lab here, if you want to check out this article, all links are in the description for the research here. And what he found is that AMD's anti-lag just doesn't reduce the system latency as much as Nvidia's reflex, but it does have some other uh, advantages and that is it doesn't impact your FPS as much. It just doesn't help your latency as much as reflex does. Obviously, Nvidia can leverage the latency advantage and use it to do frame generation while AMD isn't in the position to do something like that. Then on another level, Nvidia also has updated optical flow accelerators and Ada Lovelace, which are 4000 series GPUs. They use these optical flow accelerators to calculate the motion in games and then use that data to interpolate the frames and more accurately predict the fake frame that's going in between the two real frames and also do this more in real time. These things combined and then Nvidia just being ahead of the game and AI performance in their deep learning sector, this, this puts them in a much better position to do frame generation and AMD in developing FSR 3 might be running into these issues where they don't have these things and they have to find new ways to circumvent them. And that could easily be why it's taking so much longer to develop FSR 3 and possibly longer than AMD anticipated when they announced it. That's why we could be hearing so little things about it and there's various release dates that people are rumoring all the time but we don't really know when it's going to come out until AMD says it themselves. What's also a bummer about FSR 3, and this is kind of theoretical, we all know that AMD's FSR 2 and FSR 1 have been available on basically every GPU that exists, which makes them backwards compatible to really old parts. It allows FSR to breathe new life into old hardware, and then it also just works on AMD GPUs, on, on Intel GPUs, and works in games where DLSS or XDSS aren't available in. But FSR 3 might not be able to work on other GPUs, which is a, a real bummer when it comes down to it, because part of what they need to get it working could be in the drivers for AMD's graphics cards, which makes it, you know, not work on rival GPU hardware. It's possible with rumors here that AMD might have some fallback options for Nvidia and Intel, but it will likely be inferior to the primary impl implementation. Kind of like how XCSS, you can use it with a DP4A fallback on Nvidia and AMD GPUs. And it's also possible they're gonna be using AI units, which are repurposed vector units on its RDNA 3 graphics architecture for the first time. Not only, could it be restricted to AMD GPUs only, but RMD, RDNA 3 might be the only architecture that could use FSR 3.0 in games, which is a lot like how DLSS 3 is exclusive to Ada Lovelace on Nvidia's side. The fact that AMD's FSR 3 might not be able to run on competitors hardware is a huge bummer. But at the same time, it does not surprise me whatsoever. When you're trying to bring down the system latency, you can't guarantee on every single GPU that you could reduce the system latency in the same way. I haven't personally experienced DLSS 3 frame generation for myself, but maybe one day I'll be able to and let you guys know what I actually feel about that. But when I went to make this video, I was hoping that I would find more information about FSR 3 and I just 
couldn't find anything. There's barely anything out there. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't set your expectations up that it's coming anytime soon. I don't know why AMD announced it so early other than trying to get a quick jab in an NVIDIA. And I think that was a huge mistake on their marketing team that overestimated possibly what the developer team can actually do. Here we are with possibly another one of AMD's marketing mistakes. But hopefully they do actually get it working and we do get a product eventually in some way, shape, or form. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I will see you guys in the next video. Y'all have a good one. Peace.